What is going on everybody? Welcome back into Barley Studios for another video in the Goliath Bird Ear Tarantula Diorama Series. So I'm so excited to be able to start working on this video. Now technically I've already started this portion of the project. As you can see here, I've already got some of the legs kind of uh, sculpted out here. Here's a side clip of how that looks. But I'm so ecstatic with how they're turning out. Now of course the hair detail on these is very fine. So overall the silicone uh, casting process in the future will be, uh, you know, kind of uh, see how it goes type of thing. Some of those hairs will kind of get washed out as that silicone mold gets used up over and over again. But the goal is that I can go ahead and cast a master cast of all of these, set it off to the side, and if I ever need to make uh, future molds of those, then I can use those to do so. Uh, and then what we do, we'll do is when we get done with everything, we'll melt down the, uh, the uh, clay here and we'll use it for some other projects. Looking forward to those. So what we're going to do here is I've already got one complete side finished out and I want you to join me for the other side. So of course this is going to be de definitely time lapse but what we're going to do is we're going to block them in. We're going to kind of uh, sculpt them a little bit, get the joints put in uh, and then we'll get some little small divot striations uh, in, in the overall design uh, of the legs. Mainly the top part of the leg. Uh, the first two joints and then what we'll do is we will uh, apply that hair texture uh, even if I do apply like a flocking hair to these uh, if I don't then those who buy it and don't want to add little hairs to it and want to epoxy it instead can do so and they still get a little bit of that hair texture on the actual item and it's just not a super smooth surface um, here's a video uh, comparing the smooth surface and the the hair version. You can really see how the light really glistens off of it and it really changes the way the overall legs of the diorama look. It really gives it a cool alien effect, but that's not what we're going for with this project. We're really going for the overall Goliath Bird Eater Tarantula Spider. Um, so although it is a Goliath Bird Eater, we'll be able to kind of use it as any tarantula in general uh, for a lot of Halloween projects, uh, sculpting for uh, foam or anything like that. So let's go ahead and turn around here. We'll get the monster clay out here. This monster clay medium from Mo uh, Monster Makers. Uh, a great company. If you've never used any of their clays, make sure you go do so. Uh, it's on the costly side, you know, shipping. You have to pay for shipping from most of the places that you order this from as opposed to some other brands, but it is well worth it because you can use it over and over and over again. Uh, and then you can just continuously get more con uh, containers of it as you get your projects uh, to, to higher stages of, of complexity, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the project and get some of these legs sculpted out, you guys. <laughs> All right, you guys, so let's just jump into the content here. Now, as I stated before, I have already done one side of the spider legs. I, I really wanted to go ahead and kind of figure out how I wanted these done. Um, I wanted to go ahead and, and, and get them kind of set in their position so I can, you know, really do a, a nice thorough video for the other side. Not only am I just trying to reduce the overall content uh, uh, in the video, but I'm trying to also consolidate that down. I just don't want the video to be like two hours long of me making the same thing two times in a row, right? Because they're two separate pairs of legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the other side here. And I have a piece of foam board, XBS foam board here, that's going to be used just to kind of stick the armature wires down into as I kind of get those uh, those legs framed in and locked into position. And when I say that, I mean uh, I have them sticking into the main body of, of the coxa leg joints with that armature wire. And I'm just kind of positioning them how I think they may be uh, on the final uh, sculpture uh, when they're on the diorama. I hope I explained that right, but anyways, so here we are, we're just trying to measure off the length of the armature wire. I wanted these to have armature wire, so if I wanted to bend them around a little bit, then I have the ability to do so without the monster clay sagging or kind of um, um, losing its, uh, its formation, deforming in any way. Uh, I wanted to make sure that that was kind of stationary and, and uh, using that armature wire allows me to move those around a little bit. It does kind of break up and move the, the joints a little bit here and there. Again, this is all raw monster clay, so it's not like it's, you know, uh, a, a completely casted item and it's really hard. Uh, it's very soft in some ways, and you put, if you put a lot of pressure on it, then it can kind of bend apart a little bit. Uh, there I am. I'm just trying to show a few different ways that you can measure off the legs. If indeed you do want them to look very similar to one another, you can kind of you know measure each joint individually uh, with the, just a soft ruler there or whatever you have nearby, and you can kind of get a ballpark of what they look like. 
for the most part, as as I move forward, though, I just kind of just lay my existing armature wire up against the old legs there that I already sculpted, and then I just kind of reconfigure that length to the other side. Uh, so so what I'll do is uh, when I go to ca- uh, make a silicone cast of this or a mold of this, what I will do is I will kind of pinch all of the one side into the mold, and then I'll pinch the other side. So that way when I do cast it, if I were to cast like two of the legs, uh, two extra legs for any reason, um, or to make like backup legs, then I know which side goes to which side of the, the mold. So as you bend those armature wires, and that's the way I designed this, uh, before you were to attach these in the casted version, you would just kind of drill your holes and then bend your armature wire the way that it needs to be. And then you would just apply like a, a, a resin or like a, um, an epoxy glue or something. And then that would lock it into position. But uh, by having uh, the, the drilled armature wires in position the way they need to be, uh, it allows the customer or me, when I create the cast, to create it in any position that I need to. So let's go ahead and begin kind of blocking in the rest of the legs here. Uh, now, I know when I made the, the main body cast there, or a sculpture there, I had labeled all of the body parts. Uh, I'm not going to really do that this time. We're really just focused on just getting them blocked in and then just throwing in some details. Uh, of course, this is the second time that I've made a, an entire set of these for one side, so it's a lot faster. I really did ta- uh, take quite a bit of time to, to refine my overall technique for the other side. Uh, and this is just a lot faster uh, by doing it in two sessions um, and then only filming one portion of it. Then it just really kind of streamlines the overall process. So I have all my armature wires laid out here. Uh, and then again, this is where I'm going to just kind of lay it up against it, get the overall shape and the overall length that I need. Uh, just so that when the spider is up on the diorama or at an angle, then it just looks kind of uniform. Uh, and then once the length is okay and the joints are to their correct uh, measurements for the most part, at that point you can really kind of bend them however they need to be bent uh, for the situation that you have. Now I'm designing this so that for most part the spider generally will be on a level surface. That way I can just kind of have him general general shaped for all projects. Uh, when he's up on the, the uh, Goliath Bird Eater diorama uh, base, then he will be at a hard angle. So the spider will be kind of uh, counterwalked or uh, diagonal to the log itself. You'll see that as I kind of evolve the project later on in, in, in the future videos. Uh, but I'm really excited to, you know, get to that point and it's really going to start taking shape when I start applying, you know, the, the legs to the actual casted body as well as getting some paint on it. Trying to make sure that those front two arms there are mirrored the right way. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of go ahead and finish out the armature wires here and then you can kind of get an idea of what the overall shape of all the legs together might look like. Looking pretty good, you guys. Now, this is the kind of planning that is required, though. You really got to plan ahead. Uh, and now I'm going to use the uh, the XPS foam here to go ahead and drop these armature wires down. And then there they are all in a line. Now, don't forget, we are going to make the fangs here soon as well. That is going to be a separate video, so you'll stay tuned for that in the series. I'll probably be releasing that next week, so make sure you check out that video when it's released, or it'll be tagged at the very end of this video. So we're going to go ahead and begin this process by generally blocking in the legs. Uh, as long as they're just kind of uniform, they're, they're kind of tapering towards the very bottom of the leg or the foot, then that's all that it takes. And we're going to continuously do this for all of the legs. And we'll also leave quite a bit of meat at the very top of the leg where it kind of seats into the first coxa of the leg there. Uh, we want to make sure that that kind of, that kind of creates like a nice little socket uh, attachment there. Even if when I do cast this from the top where the armature wire is in the silicone mold, it does create a little bit of a flat surface there. That is completely okay because I've designed this so that that UV resin or epoxy or, or any kind of like uh, adhesive that you use to attach the legs will kind of ooze out a little bit right there and create just a natural joint. 
Then we're going to go ahead and use a uh, X-Acto knife here. You can use any tool that you have. You can use a fork for all you, you care. It doesn't matter. And we're just going to go ahead and section off each individual joint uh, going down the leg. Whatever you do, I just wanted to make sure that they kind of mirror the other side. And then we're just going to start to use just a, a, a wire tool here, and we're going to start to overall shape uh, the individual legs. I do go ahead and just uh, basically take away from that line that I had scored in each individual joint. And at the same time, I'm kind of just taking away and shaping each uh, segment of the leg as well. So sit back and enjoy. We're going to kind of do this one in just a overall six-time real speed here. Uh, a portion and then we'll jump to the next stage in the overall leg design. Now we'll say that one thing you'll notice here is this is quite a bit of a process. My hands are moving extraordinarily fast here, <laughs> extraordinarily fast. Uh, and, and I believe at this point I'm, I'm kicked up all the way up to 12 times speed just because this is so much sculpting and detailing and smoothing and just general shaping. Uh, and now of course I'm watching TV or Netflix while I'm doing this. So I'm just kind of relaxing and just, just enjoying the process. Uh, if you don't enjoy the process, then you're not going to uh, enjoy creating this in the future or having to reproduce it again later on down the road. And if you don't enjoy what you're creating, then create something different. Why do you why do you want to make something that you really don't enjoy? Um, and that's what I've learned through selling through Etsy and making uh, videos for YouTube and content creating is uh, you really have to enjoy it if you want to stick to it. Otherwise, if you're doing something that you're not happy with, it's just it just doesn't last very long. Creating those individual segments there, uh, and then what we'll do is during the next step uh, step in the process here, we're going to apply just a thin line of monster clay and blend it to each joint individually, and that kind of makes it look like a sectioned off, like um, kind of like a scorpion tail look to it, uh, and then we'll do a little bit more refining before we go into final details. Looking pretty good. The stance is looking very nice. It really does look somewhat different with those legs uh, up in a uh, predatory or aggressive stance. And of course, like I said before, and I'll say it again, the legs can be positioned how you want so that the body, uh, the body or the abdomen can be angled down a little bit. And then the front of the, the body can be angled up and we'll have those fangs out in the, uh, the front and the middle later on down the road. We're going to apply this little line of uh, monster clay to each individual joint here, and we'll do this across the entire side of the legs. Uh, it's a quite a bit of work. It's an extra step, and if you had done your, uh, uh, if you do your work the right way, you could technically eliminate this pro uh, step in the process. But I, I enjoy just kind of like blocking in each joint individually, one at a time, and it allows me to kind of shape them and, and uh, make sure that they're the overall right size instead of just having to uh, take my time even more in the first process uh, by using the wire tool and scrape and scrape and scrape and hope that I get the right size. By adding that little extra piece of, uh, of uh, a little line of monster clay, it really does kind of bring those joints out a little bit further. Uh, before we go into any kind of final details. Now here I am using the very core of my wire tool and I'm creating small divots. Uh, these are just to create some overall texture and I want to have something to sit some kind of like some whites and uh, uh, raw sienna paint into kind of like a lighter tone of browns when I paint it later on down the road. And of course we will also texture those with hair as well. So they just look general uh, I just don't want it to look all smooth and flat and the same. We're just going to apply some striations and some divots and lines just to kind of break it up a little bit and, and give it some texture. Normally, I'll do that on just the first two joints just because they're the ones that would be reflecting light and kind of be more so visible. And I really don't want the bottom of the legs to draw the eyes too much. I really want you to, if you were to look at the legs, they kind of catch ac across those little divots there, those lines, and then your eyes would follow up to the main body of the spider, which is where I want the eyes to center on. Applying little pieces of hair here, uh, using the X-Acto knife again. This is a very dull blade, so I'll use it until it completely dies off. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing wrong with using uh, everything you have until it's completely gone, and that's what I'm doing here. Just slowly taking the process of applying the hair striations as we go, uh, and during the working process and, and getting ready to, to uh, make the silicone mold for this, some of this does get worked out. 
So later on in the silicone making process, you will see me come back and just refine these just a little bit more uh, before the final casting. However, that is a separate video. Now, this is very tedious. Uh, my hands started cramping a little bit as I'm doing this just because this is so much movement. Uh, the 12 times speed here really just doesn't capture the overall uh, time that is invested in creating these small striational hairs. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can sculpt hair, and this is, of course, uh, just a very fast but tedious way of doing it. Um, so, so just be aware that if you do do this method, um, uh, always remember that the silicone mold will deteriorate over time, so some of these hairs will disappear. And as long as you go with that understanding, then you're good. Top left right hand corner here, we have a small picture of what they look like hanging in my studio, waiting for the silicone uh, mold kit. The mold kit we're going to be using for this is Smooth On Mold Star 15 Slow, and we used around four total kits to make this entire uh, silicone mold. The main body, of course, was Mold Star 30, two different types of silicone. Now, I want to use as many products as possible, and of course, this spider is made out of monster clay medium. So, thank you, monster makers. All right, guys, I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out this video, which is the fangs, and I'll catch you later. Thank you for watching! Check out all of these awesome videos.